Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Total Com video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Tech Power Ups GPU Z. So, yes, there is a new version available, but let's not worry about that for now because it's just going to improve the compatibility for cards, and that's not what we're going to be focused on. So, um, what exactly is Tech Power Ups GPU Z? How can it benefit you? Well, I've also wrote this as a guide, and I'd recommend you check it out because I cover some topics that I'm not going to be covering in this video simply because it would take me quite a while to go into all of it. So, what exactly does this do for you? Well, it allows you to monitor basically around a dozen different parts of your card. Um, technically, you could also do other things for it. Uh, with it, I'm sorry. You could check it out like the driver versions you're using if you so wish. You could find out what like what the default clocks are, uh, what your card is if you for some reason don't know, the manufacturing processes, uh, when it was released, BIOS versions and so on. You can also uh, dump your BIOS. You can save it. Which we're going to be going into in a different video actually when we're talking about how to actually reflash your card. But that's out of the scope of this video. So, the purpose of GPUs, uh, of GPU Z, I'm sorry, is to basically monitor different aspects of your card and find out if there's any potential issues. So, for example, is your card maybe overheating? Um, if so, you can do something about that. For example, you could set a more aggressive fan profile and say afterburner or EVGA precision, or maybe you're running out of memory. So, let's assume, for example, that you've got just make it easier two gigabyte card and let's say you see your average memory is 1.8 gigabytes used and your max is the two gigs that's probably a good indicator that you're basically going to be suffering from quite a lot of micro stuttering or stuttering as a whole where basically data is being swapped uh, through the PCIe uh, bus to the card because quite simply it's run out of memory so I'm going to be exploring a few things in this video. I'm going to be showing you guys memory used, and I'm also probably going to be showing a little bit on temperatures, but core clocks and other things I'll leave to the article. So let's discuss how this works. Now, as you can see, I've got two versions of this open. So all I had to do, by the way, to get two versions is, uh, well, load the application twice. It's that simple. Or you can technically right-click on the uh, taskbar down there and then you can choose Tech Power Up Z and that will pop up as well. I think that's in within the recording window. Uh, so if you've loaded it up once you can simply right click on it and uh, choose Tech Power Up Z and it will load it up again. I can't do that because if I do it will bring up the UAC thing and I think that will screw up my recording which is not ideal. So once you've done that um, you want to do a couple of things. You'll want to set the average on one and you'll want to set the max on another. Why? Well, you can also log this to a file. If we click on log to file, it'll basically bring up a save prompt. I'm not going to do it because it's just a save prompt. I'm sure you all know how the save prompt works. Um, and it will basically allow you to save that data so that you can peruse it later on, which is quite handy if you're doing uh, large changes to your system. For example, let's say you're moving to a different case and you want to see, hey, what are my temperatures doing? You know that that's a good that's a good example, or you know what what is going on in terms of my power. If this is particularly good, if for example you're going with SLI and you want to see what your clock speeds are going to be like, you could maybe do some monitoring of hey, okay, this is like a single card, or this is like Crossfire and SLI to see if perhaps you're um, hitting maybe uh, let's say power consumption limits. Or let's say that you're just not um, getting the boost clocks you want, then you can maybe find out why. So anyway, enough of that frivolity. Let's instead focus on exactly what you would do. So as I said, you would simply left click on these and then you can log them to a file. That's pretty important. But then you could simply choose any of these. Now, I would recommend... You can also put this onto a separate monitor. Obviously, I can't show that because of, well, I'm only recording on one screen. But if you do have a second monitor, it's quite nice because assuming the game doesn't do that thing where it makes the other monitor just go completely blank, which is bloody annoying. But if it doesn't do that and you've got like a second or a third monitor, you can easily just move that over and then get like live action as you're going through, which is quite a handy way to do it, actually. So what I'd recommend 
is that you select one to show the highest rating and uh, a reading I'm sorry and the other one to set the um, average lowest is quite nice but it's more for the GPU clock um, or for example um, you know memory controller load that type of thing honestly maximum and average for our purposes anyway are much more important because we want to know you know what's the average temperature my GPU is reaching and what's the maximum temperature my GPU is reaching now before we go any further let's also discuss what I would recommend because there's a couple of different options the first is like a benchmark utility like for example I'm not plugging any applications here i'm just using a few examples 3d marks quite handy and uh, there are others as well but i'll just use 3d mark as example um uni engine the uni bench i'm sorry that's also quite handy as well there are others you can just google them i'm sure another option would be something like uh metro's bench which would be this now i'm using last light and you can see i'm just running uh, i just run those just to get uh, the memory usage that you see on screen so let's assume you know let's go into like a magical land for just a moment let's assume that my card only had one point well, let's say I only had one gig of RAM, in which case those settings would cause me a lot of problems. So um, that's with memory used. And we can actually find out, you know, what, what was the highest temperature that my card reached? You know, what, what's the average temperature? What's the highest temperature? As you can see, I've been kind of screwing around with this a little bit. The highest temperature my card did reach, indeed, is about 65 degrees with a default fan profile. I haven't screwed around with it yet. I'm just leaving it as is. And so that's quite handy to know because then you can start figuring out, okay, well, you know, what, you know, is my card basically the cause of micro stutter? Um, and I'd recommend, for example, for those that you would leave your memory set to max and average, play a section of the game at the graphic settings that you normally would, and then you can go from there. For temperatures, however, things are a little bit different. I would instead recommend you once again set the minimum average. But what I would recommend is that you try to... Hang on, let me just move that out of the way. Is that you try to basically strain your card as much as possible. Also particularly true of the GPU's core clock as well. A memory clock. Because what this will do, it will give you a great indicator of, okay, what memory usage... Uh, sorry, what um, usage am I getting... Uh, in terms of the temperatures, you know, are my temperatures acceptable? Now, obviously, your card is going to be diff very different to my card. For example, my card could be like 95 degrees is an acceptable temperature. Yours could be 85 degrees. I'm just simply throwing out numbers. I'm not saying that your card is or my card is. I'm just giving numbers. You'll have to Google it for your specific manufacturer. For example, the R9 290s. They hit a really high temperature. I think it's 95 is acceptable, but I'm not 100% on that. You'll have to do a bit of Googling um, based on your particular card. So that's just a little bit of information for you. Now, I'm going to load this up again in just a moment because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be running this uh, benchmark, the exact same benchmark again. And instead of these numbers, I'm going to be uh, running it at this. So it should, in theory, be somewhat more taxing, and we'll be seeing these numbers going up quite high. So before we do that, before I cut you guys off in a very unceremonious way, let's actually set this up. So I'm going to set the video uh, load up. Um, highest rating. The GPU load, I'm going to set that to the highest rating. I'm kind of screwing these around, but whatever. doesn't really matter. I suppose, actually, let's just... Let's actually do this kind of right. There we go. And uh, lowest reading, average reading. And it's actually kind of nice because uh, GPU load, let's set that to max. Uh, highest reading. And let's set that to the average reading. Average max, good. Uh, fan speed, I just want to know the highest reading on that one. And um, let's set the highest fan speed as well. And let's just do that. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we've got the average and max set up. Obviously, if you were doing this properly, you would spend a little bit more time doing all that, but I just want to give you guys a demo. So I'm going to uh, pause this, 
and then I'm going to come back in just a moment after I've run the benchmark and you guys will be able to see what's gone on. Okay guys, and we are back from running the benchmark. So we're going to be seeing these figures, you're going to be seeing these figures look very different. So you can see that indeed my temperatures have definitely spiked. It went to 78 degrees as a max. Uh, fan speed hit 61 which isn't really unsurprising. Memory used, you can see that it was actually too bad, considering. I mean, I'll... <coughs> excuse me. You can see that I was actually running at uh, 1440p, very high quality, 16 AF, uh, normal blur, motion blur, I'm sorry, it's normal. So all this stuff was on the very highest, and admittedly, I was only running the benchmark, but still. You know, I only hit 1.6 gigs of RAM. I also think FX8 <laughs> is uh, forced as well. So it's not too bad. I mean, you know, you can kind of see that, you know, we hit like 99% GPU load, which is not exactly unsurprising. Um, we hit 96% of TDP. So it, it's kind of cool because that gives you just an option, an idea of how all this works. And as I said, I'd love to have um, go into more detail, but it's a pretty in-depth topic. And there are some stuff that I do want to cover in an upcoming video. We're certainly going to be discussing uh, overclocking cards. I've done a video back in the day, but I wanted to cover kind of it again because I want to go into like how to flash your card um, and a few other aspects I didn't really touch on last time because certainly things have moved on. Obviously with GPU Boost 2, overclocking is a little bit more complicated than what it used to be. So um, we'll certainly go into that and touch on some other things as well so anyway as I said it's pretty simple um, you know you can log this stuff yourself and then basically you can just use that um, to kind of your heart's content so yeah that's all there is to it it's also quite nice because um, this application because you can actually find out what like memory you're using like you know what type of RAM are you using which is quite good if you're trying to overclock and trying to find out like what is your maximum. I know that sounds weird, but different brands of memory typically overclock very differently. So for example, if you've got Samsung, it might be different to say Hinux, and that's quite nice. And I believe that when you actually change this, all your bandwidth and stuff will act, yeah, it does, because I've got a very slight overclock on my memory, because I was just kind of testing this out to show you guys more. So you could see that that actually um, is, is actually reflected here. So that's quite cool as well. Anyway, Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.